this quote about, um, you know, tradition is the living faith of those who have died, but for those people who are looking backward who call themselves traditionalists, it is the dead faith of the living. The context of that comment was actually him answering a question that had nothing to do with tradition. He was actually asked during this in-flight press conference if the church's ban on contraception could be, quote, reconsidered. Now, Mm -hmm. a good a good and faithful bishop of the church would simply say, no, next question. <laughs> right. It's that simple. Or maybe give some explanation as to why that's the case. But here's what he had to say, quote, this is something very timely. That's the first thing he said in his answer about this question. But know that dogma, morality, is always on a path of development, but always developing in the same direction not according to what he's insinuating, as we will see. Uh, and then he refers to what he talks about, the rule, a rule that is very clear and illuminating. It's more or less what Vincent of Lirin did. Francis said in the 10th century, this saint actually died in yeah. the mid-5th century. <laughs> um, and according to Francis, St. Vincent of Lirin, quote, says that true doctrine in order to go forward, to develop, must not be quiet, it develops, and then he quotes the Latin of St. Vincent, which means essentially, as he explains, is consolidated over time. It expands and consolidates and becomes always more solid, but always progressing. He paraphrased what St. Vincent wrote, number one, and number two, he left out some very important content. So let me read to you the full context from St. Vincent Lorenz's Ammonitorium. Um, here's what he says. The growth of religion in the soul. So first of all, St. Vincent was writing about the growth of our understanding, the depth of our understanding of tradition, not the objective content itself. He says the growth of religion in the soul must be analogous to the growth of the body, which though in process of years it is developed and attains its full size, yet remains still the same. So I'm the same person that I was when I was five years old, 10 years old, 20 years old, you know, I'm the same person I've grown and developed, but you know, I'm, I don't change into a different thing. Right. Same so St. Vincent of Lur- right. St. Vincent of Lorin goes on in like manner. It behooves Christian doctrine to follow the same laws of progress. So as to be consolidated by years, enlarged by time, refined by age and yet to continue uncorrupt and unadulterated. Francis didn't mention that. Complete and perfect right. in all the measurement of its parts, adding no change, no waste of its distinctive property, no variation in limits. And ultimately, St. Vincent of Lorin elsewhere in that same work totally destroys what Francis is trying to say here, that you know he's basically opening the door to the possibility of accepting contraception as acceptable in certain circumstances. That seems to be where this is going. And, and I said, uh, I, can I please just, I, I hate to yeah, interrupt you, ahead. but this is a key thing. I said years ago with Laudato C, the environmental theology push, the end game for it is birth control. That's the end game. And we've seen Francis appoint birth control experts, population world experts to the activities, synods, pontifical academies, conferences that he's hosting. It goes like this. Well, world economics changed over time. Fiat currencies happened. And so therefore, our understanding of usury gets modified. Okay. Well, our understanding of the planet and ecology and pollution and space and urban planning has developed over time. So we can't have so many people on the planet. So we are pivoting and changing our position on contraception and birth control. Laudato C was part of the foundation for what we are now seeing in 2022. Everybody understand that. Everybody, you got to understand the environmentalism is going towards this trajectory. Yes, absolutely. 